Chapter 6 Movements and Machinations Trixie, cheerily asked as she caught up with the unicorn outside of Town Hall. The blue unicorn ignored her as she focused on her target, a dark blue earth pony mare wearing a brown hooded winter cloak, though its hood was down at the moment. Trixie was holding up a small bag with magic, and with more magic was levitating ten silver bits into it. Lyra Heartstrings, Trixie said. She's staying with her parents at 12 Hayseed Lane. Find her and get her to come to the representative's residency at six o'clock. The mayor stared blankly at Trixie. Do I look like a message runner to you? She demanded. In response, Trixie's magic placed the bag atop the earth pony's head. Every pony looks like a message runner when I'm paying them another 20 bits if they do what I ask. The mayor's eyes widened a little. She flicked her head and the bag fell from it, though she caught it in her mouth as it fell. Fooled, she said as best she could with a mouthful of cloth and money as she trotted off, joining a couple of stallion friends. Cheerily blinked as she came up alongside Trixie, staring at the unicorn. You could have just asked me, she remarked. No, you're going to be busy, Trixie remarked as she began cantering away from the town hall towards the equestrian royal bank. You've got that little stand of art projects to set up. You're welcome, by the way. Cheerily's eyes narrowed. You know, I wanted that spot, I really did, but I didn't want to leave Rarity an emotional wreck just to get it. Please, Trixie said derisively. She'll be fine. That's not the point, Cheerily objected. You don't know how much of a perfectionist Rarity is, and interestingly enough... Trixie said, stopping and glaring at Cheerily, looking at the Earth Pony for the first time since she had come outside. I don't care either. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. Cheerily matched Trixie's glare. If it's anything like what just happened in there, she said, pointing back to the town hall, then the festival is going to be ruined. Trixie's lip curled into a sadistic smile. Fine by me, she hissed, as she turned away and began walking again. Cheerily stared after her for a few moments before shaking her head and trotting off towards Bon Bon's confectionarium. Lyra may have been theoretically living with her parents, but Trixie obviously didn't know the mint green unicorn very well if she honestly thought she'd be staying with them for a significant portion of any given day. Trixie entered the post office and found it in a considerably better state than it had been when she and Lyra had entered yesterday, with no mess of fallen shelves and turned over carts confronting her. Instead, on entering, Trixie found herself staring into the wide yellow eyes of a unicorn filly sitting behind the counter where the receptionist was supposed to be. Hello! the young unicorn exclaimed as Trixie entered, eyes closing and offering a bright grin. Trixie froze as she stared at the filly. She looked like nothing so much as a miniature, wingless, horned version of Ditsy Doo. The filly was even wearing a male pony's cap, though it was too large for her head. Despite her ebon-hued mood, Trixie couldn't help but feel her heart swell slightly at the sight, most likely because her brain was failing at the moment to fully process what she was seeing. How can I help you? The filly asked. Her hat almost slid off her head, but the filly stopped it with one hoof and forced it back into place. Trixie blinked. Uh, she managed before her brain settled into a comfortable autopilot. I need to express deliver this letter. Her horn glowed as she telekinetically withdrew an envelope from her cape and holding it aloft. The same day delivery to Cloudsdale. The filly frowned a little, closing her eyes tightly. Small sparks sprang from her horn and a faint lavender aura wrapped itself around Trixie's letter. Trixie relinquished her grip on it and the envelope haltingly made its way over to the little filly, though she nearly lost her grip a few times. At length, it settled down in front of her, and the filly opened her eyes again, panting heavily as she looked at the package. Okay, she breathed. Okay, um, to Cloudsdale? Same day? That's... The filly's nose scrunched slightly as she looked over a chart in front of her and tapped out a rhythm with her front hooves to aid with basic arithmetic. Twenty bits. Twenty-two, a voice whispered from under the counter. 22 bits, the filly corrected herself. Trixie managed to last a few more moments before coming right up to the counter, peering over it. Sure enough, sitting on her stomach on the other side was a grey-coated pegasus, hat missing but otherwise in uniform and keeping one eye on the filly, 
while the other had previously wandered towards the ceiling, but was now looking at Trixie. Hi, Ditsy Doo said. Hi, Trixie returned. After several moments of silence, she stepped back from the counter and looked to the filly again. Twenty-two? She asked. The filly nodded, and Trixie removed the bits from her money bag. Like any good sales pony, the filly began counting them out as Trixie once more looked over the counter. Little sister? She asked the mare hiding there. Ditsy Doo shook her head. Dinky Doo's my daughter, she explained. I'm my mama's muffin, Dinky Doo exclaimed happily as she closed her eyes again, using her nascent telekinesis to move the bits into a cash drawer behind the desk. It was slow going, giving Trixie plenty of time to take in the little filly and compare her apparent age to that of the mare who was the mother. The Pegasus didn't look like she was much older than Trixie. And for Dinky to be as old as she looked, Ditsy Doo would have to have given birth to the filly when she was younger than Trixie was now. It did at least explain the maternal authority she had brought to bear against her and Rainbow Dash yesterday. Why is she here? Trixie asked. No school today, Ditsy Doo explained. So she's helping me out. First she helped me with my morning rounds. <laughs> that was fun, Dinky Doo interrupted. But a lot of walking. And now she's helping me around the office. Mail mare for a day. Yay, Dinky exclaimed as she finished putting away the silver bits and began using her telekinesis to lift Trixie's letter once more. Unfortunately, she tried too hard and the envelope began crumpling up. Ah! The unicorn exclaimed, Lavender Aura instantly dropping from the letter. It fell to the desk as Ditsy Doo stood and Dinky Doo stared in horror. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought I had it, but I grabbed it too hard and I only started doing telekinetics a few weeks ago and sometimes it's really hard, but sometimes I grab things harder than I mean to and it's just like the cup I broke, but I didn't mean to. Trixie held up a hoof even as Ditsy Doo placed a reassuring one on her daughter's back. Trixie's horn glowed, and the letter instantly began to smooth itself out. The creases remained, but the letter was flat once more. There we go, Trixie reassured the filly. Good as new. Dinky sniffed a little, but nodded and smiled, at least until she noticed her mother eyeing her. Cup? Ditsy Doo asked. Dinky offered a guilty laugh, rubbing the back of her head with a hoof. Um, she explained. We'll talk about it later. Ditsy Doo promised as she looked over Trixie's letter to Cloudsdale. Her eyes widened a little. A weather for higher service? Trixie decided not to wonder how the Pegasus knew where the letter was going from nothing more than a cloud address. Yes, she confirmed. That Everfree storm is getting worse from the looks of things, and the Weather Patrol told me yesterday that they're going to be completely at a loss without their captain. So, weather for hire. A dozen Pegasi ought to equal one Rainbow Dash, right? Ditsy Doo made a face at that. Raindrops isn't going to like that. Why not? Trixie asked. She's the one who was complaining about the storm and not having Rainbow Dash. Besides, it's not her decision, it's Cloud Kicker's. Ditsy Doo stuck out her tongue at that. Cloud Kicker just goes along with anything Rainbow Dash tells her to do. Raindrops is the pony who actually keeps the patrol together during bad times. She completely, honestly loves her job. And she hates weather for higher services. This wasn't precisely news for Trixie. Even from her brief interaction with Raindrops, she felt she had a pretty good beat on the pony's personality. In point of fact, to an extent, she was counting on it. Well, she's going to have to pony up and deal with it, Trixie retorted, drawing a glare from Ditsy Doo. Trixie didn't relent. Princess Luna's coming tomorrow. Those skies have to be clear for the festival, and if Rainbow Dash isn't going to lead her team like she should, and the pony who is supposed to lead the team isn't going to be of any use, then as festival overseer, it's my job to get outside help to make things run smoothly. I think it's a bit more likely that Raindrops will start a fight with the weather for higher ponies. Trixie managed to conceal both her grin and a response of, I hope so. Trixie was either going to fix this Longest Night Festival or completely ruin it for every pony, and at the moment she was finding it hard to care which happened, even with two helpful participants in front of her. We'll just have to risk that, she said instead, then looked down to Dinky Doo. So I need this letter to be sent as fast as possible, okay? Okay, the filly exclaimed, taking it in her mouth. Apparently she wasn't trusting her telekinesis at the moment despite Trixie's reassurances, and scampered off through a door out of sight. 
Leroy Winkins is doing the express today, Dinky Doo explained as she watched her daughter go with one eye. It'll be in Cloudsdale in no time. She turned to look at Trixie again. I hope you know what you're doing. Course I do, Trixie lied, sort of, as Dinky Doo came back and got back up on the box that had allowed her to be at the desk. She looked to the filly and found herself unable to resist doing something memorable. Like Luna, she loved foals. The blue unicorn reached over and rubbed the filly on the head, nearly knocking her hat off and tossing her mane. And thank you, Dinky Doo. Hey! Dinky objected, though she giggled a little too. <laughs> Stop that! Okay, okay, Trixie relented. It's just that there's something caught in your hair under your hat. Dinky blinked a few times, then took off the cap and checked her head, and found a silver bit falling out. She, impressively for her age, caught it with her telekinesis, eyes wide as she looked at Trixie to her hat, which she hadn't noticed leaving her head at any point. How'd you do that? the young unicorn demanded. Magic, Trixie responded. But your horn wasn't glowing. That's why it's magic, Trixie responded knowingly, turning around and trotting from the post office in a slightly better mood than when she had entered. Seeing the sun's descent across the sky, however, towards the horizon, turned her thoughts dark again. It served as a potent reminder of how little time remained before the Longest Night Festival began tomorrow, and how Luna had exiled Trixie to Ponyville, though not before setting her up with a no-win scenario. Regardless of whether the result of the day was a saved or ruined festival, though, Trixie still had work to do. Grunting, she set off for her residency. So, Lulamoon, Lyra began. Trixie's glare at the name could have frozen the sun from its coldness. We're back to wanting Trixie, then, the unicorn observed. Back? Trixie demanded. Last night you insisted I call you Lulamoon. You might have been slightly very drunk. She paused a moment as she considered. About half of everything you said was in French, too, I think. Trixie stared a few moments before letting out a groan. No, it wasn't, she objected hopefully. It was, Lyra responded, nodding sadly. Also fell back into what I can only guess is a Ney Orleans accent. And you called me and Bon Bon cute. Bon Bon? My mare friend. I'd feel threatened, but again, drunk, and you're not her type anyway. Plus, you thought every pony was cute at the time, even yourself. She leaned forward. But in purple, you're stunning, apparently. Never again, Trixie swore as she regarded her purple star-studded cape. Don't make promises you can't keep. Meh, Trixie objected. The two were sitting in Trixie's office, Trixie behind her desk. She had just, in fact, poured herself a glass of something amber-colored to see if it could steady her nerves or at least brighten her mood, but after Lyra's revelation, she was thinking water would do just fine. The blue unicorn began pouring her drink back into its bottle as she eyed her mint green counterpart. Anyway, Lyra, first I want to thank you for showing me around most of Ponyville and leaving me in capable hooves before ditching me, which I'm not mad about, I swear. No problem. Which brings me right to why I just paid some random pony 30 bits to get you here. I need your help. Lyra grimaced slightly. Uh, cheerily warned me about that, said you were wandering around town today basically on a warpath, conning Carrot Top into opening a stall on the longest night, making Rarity freak out about her decorations, ordering weather for higher ponies and using up just about your entire monthly stipend on them? Lyra blinked a few times. What are you going to eat anyway for the next month? Trixie shrugged. I don't know, I'll think of something. But that's not important right now. What's important is that Fluttershy is refusing to do the music. So since you're a musician... Lyra's eyes widened a little as she realized what Trixie was going to ask. No, she intoned. Is that a no I'm not going to do it or a no way I can't believe it? Trixie asked with her smile on her face, sure of the answer. No, I'm not going to do it. Lyra responded evenly. Trixie's smile dropped. That was not the answer she had been expecting. What? The festival is tomorrow night. I would need more time to prepare. A set list, at least. Just play the anthem. For the raising of the moon, sure, but what about the rest of the night? And besides, I'm spending the night with Bon Bon. Lyra matched Trixie's hard stare without effort. The two unicorns were silent for some time, 
before Trixie wickered in annoyance, trotting around from behind her desk and horn glowing as she took a letter from her cape's pocket. The letter was from former Baron Duke Blueblood, which she shoved in front of the mint green unicorn. This is where I am, Lyra, Trixie intoned after giving her a few moments to read. I have one chance, one, maybe, of getting back in Luna's good graces, and that's saving everything from going straight into the sun. Lyra shook her mane. If that's true, she asked, then why does it seem like you're trying to ruin everything? You're going to start a fight between the Apple Clan and poor Carrot Top. Not just her, Trixie objected quickly, sliding the letter back into her cape pocket. I've actually arranged for a few other stalls, too, spent most of the afternoon, but there won't be a fight because they're not selling on festival grounds. That's semantics, and you know it. You think the Apples will care? Of course they'll care, but they can't do anything about it, and it'll give Luna more to eat than just Apples. And leaving Rarity an emotional train wreck? Lyra asked. She's still in the town hall, you know. She'll probably be working her hooves off until right before the festival's to begin. And it looked great and you know it. But now the decorations will probably end up looking like they were done by a school filly. And weather ponies for hire? You'll be lucky if the weather patrol doesn't break in here and kill you in your sleep. Trixie rolled her eyes. Raindrop herself said that she couldn't promise anything. If the storm over the Everfree is as bad as she said it was going to be, can I be blamed for wanting to hedge my bets? Lyra sighed, conceding that point. It's going to end poorly, that's all, she promised. And you want to add me to all of this? Trixie shrugged. Know any other musicians living in Ponyville? Ones that are good enough to play for the princess herself? The unicorn took a step forward. She was playing her entire hoof here, faster than she normally would, but if that was what it took. If you do, for the love of the stars, tell me now. Otherwise, I've heard you play that harp. Liar, Lyra interrupted, with the same kind of force that Trixie put behind her demands about her name. Liar, sorry. That liar of yours, and you're good. And you've just graduated from that magic school, so I'm guessing you know a lot of spells to enhance your playing. Imagine how that must look on a music resume. Music resume? Lyra asked, one brow raised. You have no idea how being a musician works, do you? I know that ponies with more consistent jobs would never pass up an opportunity like this. Lyra's brow arched higher. More consistent jobs? She echoed. You don't think very much of me, do you? Trixie blinked a few times. No! Wait, yes, no, whatever! I think you're just fine, I just... Well, it's just that you'll be totally depending on the goodwill of ponies for an income. Goodwill here being synonymous with charity, Lyra growled. No, Trixie objected, stomping a hoof on the wooden floor. Look, the point is, you're just out of the magic school on a music scholarship, and your first job would be playing for Princess Luna. Lyra's glare didn't drop for several moments, but eventually she did look away, tapping a hoof to her chin in thought. Trixie was silent, though she shuffled from hoof to hoof in anticipation. At length, Lyra looked back to her. The national anthem only, she acquiesced, and only for raising the moon. Trixie blinked. What about midnight or the drawing down of the- Lyra stood up and turned to the door. See you tomorrow night, Trixie. Wait, 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 Trixie objected, dashing forward and in front of Lyra. Okay, fine, just the moon. And the stringing up for the stars. They're part and parcel. You can't do one without the other. It'll be all of five minutes. Lyra waited a moment before nodding her head once. Deal, she agreed, and watched Trixie let out a sigh of relief. After a moment, Lyra leaned in. But only because this really is a once-in-a-lifetime gig. I don't like you basically calling me a jobless bum. She didn't wait for Trixie to apologize before pushing past the unicorn heading for the residency's door. Trixie let her go. Had Lyra waited around, Trixie was certain she would have apologized, or said the words, anyway. Her heart would hardly be behind it, as, after all, she did end up with what she wanted. Instead, Trixie trotted back to her desk, running over a mental list. Catering. Saved, at least for her own satisfaction. She had just enough bits left for a decent meal tomorrow. Music. Saved for the most important part, anyway. Weather, still iffy, but at least the matter was now in hoof, if volatile. 
Raindrops seemed far too professional to do anything more than complain about the weather for hire ponies. Decorations? Well, admittedly, Trixie had possibly ruined them, but if that was the case, then it was so worth it to get back at Rarity for the dress and her shallow behavior. Speaking of getting back, Trixie still had one particular pony she needed to lash out at. Trixie was certain that come tomorrow, Luna would see that Trixie was capable of bringing a festival back from the brink of disaster, that she was more than ready to handle the more demanding responsibilities of the night court, and to finally put both her sociological studies and her magical knowledge to practical use. So the final step then was to show Luna how Trixie would waste that talent, and all the long years of teaching that the Shepherd of the Moon had invested in her, if the princess really did intend to simply dump Trixie in Ponyville like so much trash. <laughs>